Thank you very much. Yesterday, I think at exactly this time, Tom Soto on my right and I and about eight others walked into D Block of Attica Prison. We faced some 1,500 prisoners, most of whom's arms were locked together. These were the so-called rebels of D Block. I brought with me to read to you what these men wanted, what their cry was to a government that murdered them today. They said this, we are men, we are not beasts, and do not intend to be beaten or driven as such. The entire prison populace has set forth to change forever the ruthless brutalization and disregard for the lives of the prisoners here. What has happened here is but the sound before the fury of those who are oppressed. What demands that will bring closer to reality the demise of these prison institutions that serve no useful purpose to the people of America, but to those who would enslave and exploit the people of America. They sat in that prison yesterday and they said nobody would be harmed not a hair of the hostage's head would be touched. All they wanted to do was negotiate. They said if the police came in, they would kill the hostages. They made this quite clear. And in making it clear, they told the authorities, keep negotiating. We want to negotiate. Tom and I were led in yesterday by Brother Richard Clark. We were led up. To microphones, we spoke, we saw seven hostages, we heard the men in jail, this was our third or fourth visit since this stuff in there. If you forget, they have died in vain. If you forget, let's keep it lost. down, we're going on, let's keep it down. Don't let the man hassle you. He wants to break this up. Attica caused a worsening of treatment of prisoners all over the state, not just in Attica? I think it's very obvious with the reluctance of the state to allow the press to come in and members of the New York State Legislature that the uh, repressive conditions have heightened tremendously. In all prisons? In, in all prisons. And that the inmates have said to me, Mr. Eve, we did not kill any hostages. Uh, we tried to resolve this thing peacefully. Uh, and people must be aware that we are not going to be dehumanized. We're not going to be subjected into a kind of condition mentally or physically that will take away our manhood and our, you know, decency. of a demonstration in Marine Midland Bank and when we got the news of the Attica uh, rebellion and so we took a busload of people out there just to see what was going on and when we got out there uh, Assemblyman Eve was already there and so uh, some of the inmates uh, had heard about Bill and what we were doing in the community, and they requested that uh, we be added to the observer list. A whole group of people were coming from all over the state and to be observers uh, and also like negotiators uh, to try to resolve that issue. We started out as observers and ended up being negotiators. So I became part of that representative bill organization along with uh, one of my staff persons, Domingo Rodriguez. 
it got to the point that uh, the state decided that they were not going to negotiate with the inmates anymore. And so they kind of like told all of us to go home. And of course, as you know, the next morning they came in and retook uh, the prison and killed some 40 people or so. Commissioner Oswald said the decision to bring the Attica uprising to an end was made in order to, as he put it, to preserve the penal system. I'm wondering what your feelings are about this statement and what other alternatives you feel should have been made. Well, I think that that statement is probably one of the most ridiculous I've ever heard. We brought uh, Captain Calley to trial, you know, for the same kind of thing, saying that he had to murder people in order to preserve something. There's no excuse at all, you know, within our system for murder, a uh, particular kind of murder and mayhem that was uh, wrought at Attica. Well, actually, um, Bill went in to, to, um, to try and mediate. Um, we began to try and establish uh, some um, affirmative action within the guard population in Attica that had been all white and rural white. Uh, most of the prisoners, as you know, are, there is today, are, were urban blacks. Um, there was always this sort of conflict and this racism that existed. And Bill uh, attempted to set up some programs to begin to integrate the guard force uh, in Attica, as well as to uh, monitor the um, the process in addressing the grievances that the inmates had brought to light uh, during the uprising. They're designed to implement a federal grant which will pay for the immediate hiring and training of minority members for prison guard jobs. The initial goal is 50 with almost all earmarked for Attica. Dr. Alan Bush is coordinating the project for the State Civil Service Department. Doctor, is this type of minority recruitment an about face for civil service and the corrections department? They have constantly recruited them, except I don't think the emphasis was on it as much as it is now, for many reasons, as we're all aware. And it, in order to do so, we realize you've got to go right into the community and do it. Minority groups angered at what happened at Attica feel this type of recruitment is a must in order to avoid future confrontations. about uh, the uh, books on black history and culture, uh, books about the whole black struggle for liberation, uh, both in, in terms of its historical context and its present movement, books in Spanish about Spanish culture and Spanish history, uh, the struggle of Spanish and other minorities in this country. So we're basically thinking about a readable library rather than uh, an academic kind of library. This was one of the uh, demands from the uh, inmates during the uh, Attica riot. Uh, you apparently aren't waiting for the state to do anything on this. No, we aren't. We, um, we realize uh, from the reports of our people who have been out there uh, that the library facilities are inadequate, uh, particularly most library facilities are inadequate when it comes to black culture. Uh, the state um, is dragging its feet in doing anything about the demands of the uh, inmates. We feel that uh, Buffalo could show its uh, support, its solidarity with the inmates in their struggle uh, by providing this kind of facility. Are there any restrictions that you know of as far as the type of books that will be allowed in the prison? 
not that we know of. And if there are any, uh, that will be part of the continuing struggle that we'll have in seeing that uh, those inmates have the right to read uh, the same kind of books that any citizen reads. From your contact with the uh, prison itself, uh, what's changed since the riot, if anything? Well, the report that I have uh, from our people who've been there, not very much. I think our efforts there, uh, particularly, I think, led by the um, primary director or the staff person uh, in Bill at that year, Bill Gator, uh, I think were really um, outstanding. And I think they took on a um, um, yeoman's job, really, in terms of addressing that issue.